good morning adobe live how's everybody doing today uh my name is ryan selvey and i am a motion designer illustrator graphic designer um, here on adobe live and i am going to be with you guys over the next hour going over some ways that you can take your footage and you can really change it even if it is just hand shot even if it is just off of your phone and finding ways to make it feel more cinematic and more professional even without all the fancy equipment. And we'll be doing all of this mostly in Premiere, and we'll be going over some different industry standards of ways to make it happen. This is a live stream, but I do plan on making it um, as useful for replayability as possible. So if you're watching the replay, thanks for being here. Hi. Uh, and for everybody else who's over in chat, like uh, Peter, Oliver, uh, Annika, Alessandra, thank you guys for being here. And um, yeah, let's hop right into it. One of the first things that I want to talk about is the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds is um, a industry standard where you can go and you can break up your footage into three equal parts. And um, it will make it so your uh, footage just looks more cinematic. So what we want to do um, is we're going to actually create some guides within Premiere to actually have that reference. And you can actually even turn this on on your, your, your phone as well if you go under the settings of your camera and you can turn on um, the rule of thirds. But it's definitely not the only way to um, organize your shots, but it is a good way to at least give a starting point and kind of have something to lean back on. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that we have our um, our, our monitor selected over here and we're going to view um, add guide and from there a new dialog menu will pop up from the add guide you'll have the position and you can change it either between percentage or pixels and for this case since we're gonna be doing the rule of thirds um, it's really nice that you can actually just do percentage here in this position spot because then it can apply to any composition aspect ratio that you have and in a, just a little bit we will be going over aspect ratios and how that can affect the style and feeling of your picture and your piece um, but for the time being as we're creating the rule of thirds let's just pop up and add a guide and we can click 33.33 uh, uh, which is a third of the way and we're going to have this coming from the top um, from a horizontal uh, orientation and we're gonna press OK. So we automatically get this first one. We need to have three more lines in total. So you can go down here and click view, add guide. Uh, and rather than 33, we're gonna put 66.66 here. And um, this will also pop down here. Another way you can also do these same additions of rulers is you can actually um, press control R and it will show the rulers on the sides of your um, your preview. And you can just actually click and drag over. It will give you uh, actual pixels amount. So we know here that this is 1920 by 1080, which is a traditional 16 by 9. But um, what rather than having to do the math for this, which you obviously can do if you would like, um, but it's nice you can actually just right click on it after you've brought it out. Uh, you want to change this from the orientation. It will be now be vertical. And same thing here. You change this to percent. And you would just change this to 33.33. It'll place it there. And then we'll just do one more. And press edit guides. We'll go to percent. And we'll change this to 66.66% vertical. And now we have the rule of thirds on top of your composition. Now, that it takes a little bit of time doesn't take too long honestly um i mean we just did it in under like two minutes but if you're doing it a lot you can go into your view and um, under guide templates all you have to do is click save guides as template and give it a name we'll call it rule of thirds and now whenever we pull up new pieces we can easily go down to view guide templates and have the rule of thirds pop up if at any time you want to get rid of it you can either clear the guides entirely um, we'll bring it back by going guide templates, rule of thirds, and you can also keep them there, but just hide them by going and saying show guides. But now you've got lines on your composition. You're like, how does this make my piece better? Um, Aaron was kind enough to help me out with creating some examples of, um, how you can frame your shots. 
But I also went ahead and I went and grabbed um, some stock footage that we can use to just see how we can take a ordinary composition and um, uh, kind of change it up to make it more attractive with the rule of thirds. So I want to go here and I'm going to click uh, new sequence from clip. And you can see here we have this nice family having a picnic in their very empty backyard. <laughs> and uh, they are kind of just haphazardly placed in the composition. And as an editor, you know, you are always want to have a connection to the production. And if you are able to identify your um, aspect ratio and framing before you even get to editing, you can do some more creative things. But let's be real, that's not always the reality. A lot of times you get footage and you are then kind of in charge of updating it. Peter in the chat says they need some landscaping. Yeah, I very clearly probably this was a empty home and people came to go um, film it. But as you can see, we have our rule of thirds on top of here. And the thing about the rule of thirds is you kind of want to place your points of interest on either these intersections or you have them line up with maybe a horizontal line that can go across these landscapes or these verticals. So um, if we just watch it as is, um, they're just here and they're, you know, pulling those grapes out. <laughs> um, but what we can do is we can go into the uh, effects property panel on the effects control and under motion, we have position and scale. So if we bring up the scale, um, we move it around. Maybe we put, you know, the dad up here at this intersection. We zoom in a little bit more. Um, Maybe not too much because we also want to have the mom kind of at also this intersection. And now if we play it again, it has a completely different feel. It feels way more professional. It's still the same shot. We haven't really done much to it and it still makes things exciting. You can even continue that. And depending on the quality of your footage, you know, you could even zoom in more if you wanted to. And if we do this, then we have the intersection of both the father and the son both kind of at these intersections. Um, and with that, it makes for a more interesting shot, feels more cinematic, feels a lot better. Um, let's say you also wanted to go back and you wanted to have like a real wide shot. It might be best to take the horizon line that you have here and you can go and maybe like um, depending on the mood that you want, if you wanted to have like a full house kind of vibe, uh, you could go and potentially, uh, line it up on the bottom so that it has a focus on the house. Uh, you could also bring it up here. If you bring up the scale, if you bring up to here, it's going to feel a lot better. Um, and it's just like a simple way that you can kind of apply this to many different types of footage. So let's do another one. Um, we have a cityscape of lower Manhattan. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and plop it in here. We're going to look at it again. We have um, some footage of just some clouds going behind One World Trade Center. And um, this can actually be pretty exciting because we already actually have One World Trade Center here um, lined up with these verticals. But what you could do is you could maybe um, bring the scaling down a little bit. You could move it up. Um, and it makes the city feel a little bit more grandiose because you have a wider shot here and it kind of lines up along with the water to have. In this case, it is cutting off the top. So maybe we would want to scale it down even more. Um, and in this case, we can see that our aspect ratio is starting to conflict with the footage that we have. And that would be in a great time to talk a little bit um, about aspect ratios. So aspect ratios are the format that you have um, for a, a, any given movie. Back in the olden days, back when cinematography was kind of just getting it started out, you'll realize that a lot of the old videos that you can think of have um, a four by three aspect ratio. 
and I went ahead and I drew a little thing for you guys. Um, four by three, it's, you know, the original classic is for 35 millimeter. It's the TV sizes that you can think of. Um, when you're thinking of something like the Wizard of Oz, uh, or you're thinking of maybe like, um, uh, uh, it's a wonderful life. You can think of these ideas when they're in this little tiny boxes. And, um, that was mostly because of the technology and distribution. And so you don't always have control over your aspect ratios, but immediately you can think of this kind of square feel for a, um, older experience. So even in new movies, you can see that they use aspect ratios as a change of formatting and editing in order to make a experience that makes it feel older. There are plenty of movies that have multiple aspect ratios, um, and they'll switch actually back to this four by three scenario to make it feel like it's older. Like in Grand Budapest Hotel, they do it, um, in, uh, 500 days of summer, they do it when they're kind of looking back in time and then they'll switch back to widescreen. So when you shoot something on your phone, you're normally probably shooting in something like 16 by nine. It's what YouTube takes is what your YouTube, uh, it, it, it's what your phone records in. And a lot of the things that you kind of have association with kind of just generic, um, regular cinematography, uh, maybe like a uh, home alone or maybe uh, back to the future. You can have this 16 by nine experience where um, everything kind of just feels standard. There's nothing really too crazy going on. And um, it makes it to just feel generic. You know, you have your 16 by nine and it's good. You can then continue to completely widen things out even more if you'd like. Um, and you can jump over to something um, like ultra widescreen with um, like Star Wars or maybe the Godfather for something that is very big and very epic, something that you want to see a lot of um, expanse for. I know that even for, um, I think it was like Gravity with Sandra Bullock, like when they were inside, they were in 16 by 9 inside the thing. But then when they cut to the expansive outer shots, you're going to get it to actually widen out. Then you can even, there, there are hundreds of aspects ratios, um, uh, probably just like five or six. These are just three of the ones that I kind of wanted to show the difference between kind of having a narrow field and longer, wider. But um, when you uh, are playing around with aspect ratios, it can really change the feel of the show. And also um, for IMAX or something, like for Batman, they can have uh, actually expansion of it into the full screen so that you know that you're about to see something that um, you're going to want every inch and cranny and something really epic and huge is going to happen. Um, so taking in mind that you have your aspect ratios, that also really changes how your audience subconsciously is going to be understanding what's going on. I mean, even when we just switched here right now, I kind of switched into now I have a border around the screen and um, it, it feels a little bit different than if I were to maybe make it something where, you know, we go here and it's a full screen or we bring it in. Um, so just keeping that in mind and you can also actually add things on top to your compositions to make it feel more cinematic. So last night I went ahead and I got Aaron to help me out with some footage where we can go in and we can explore a little bit um, about different ways to cut, different ways to position, and uh, a thing called the 180 rule in order to explore how to make sure that we have a cinematic feel for very poorly shot footage. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up one of the videos that we have and um, you can see from this aspect that we have right now. Uh, I'm going to show you kind of like how we got here. And even though it is, like I said, um, not wonderful audio or actually um, great camera, it was just on my iPhone, you can see that we did some cool stuff. And I want to break down as to why it is a um, improvement from what we started with. So here we go. Uh, enjoy this very weird um, uh, breakdown of birds. Hi. Hi. What is your favorite bird? 
My favorite bird is Big Bird. Wait, your favorite bird is Big Bird from Sesame Street? Yeah, it is. It's Big Bird from Sesame Street. I like Why is Big Bird your favorite bird? I like bird? its feathers. Its feathers are yellow. So what we just happened here is we went over something with the 180 degree rule. And 180 degree rule is when you have the two people talking, it's very helpful to have different types of cuts to kind of add more dynamic shots to your experience and having two people talk. Um, and the way that this works is you wanna kind of draw a line between two people and have, um, uh, the best way to think about it is to have overhead shots here. And um, here we have these two ladies, they're looking at each other. And in our experience, we're going to have a camera, which is our wide establishing shot. And it's right over here. So it's on this side. And once we do that, that creates a line straight down the middle between the two characters, um, which is our 180 degree line. We then have, when you guys saw what we just watched, we have the other cameras that are popping up uh, and it is left, middle, and right. And this one is shooting towards her, this one's shooting towards her, and this one is the wide shot. Uh, the rule of 180 degrees is that you never want to pass this 180 line that we have now, because as soon as you kind of move things around, um, it will be confusing to the viewer as to where the people are in space. And as soon as you kind of break this and go over it, you then add a place of uncertainty for understanding how the conversation is going. And so if we go back to the thing that we just watched, I can actually show you that I started breaking it after this clip and it gets very weird. So audio is not important. Um, we can actually blow this up a little bit. Um, let me see if I do this as full C's. That's my butt. Um, and we'll do fit. All right, so let's see. So looking at this with the understanding of the 180 degree rule, we did a wide shot, we did a right, we did a left. Um, then we're gonna go back to showing, and we still have not passed that line. We're on the right, we're on the left, but then we start this moment, which is suddenly we have passed the 180 rule and suddenly it's confusing because why all of a sudden are you kind of turned around and then it switches and it feels like a different experience. Um, now you can sometimes break this if you want something to be going on, like you want to make it feel uncanny, uh, but for the most part, this feels way more natural to the viewer because they can say Ryan's on the right, Aaron's on the left, and we never have to worry about the idea of the positioning of people. As soon as you kind of start doing this, you also start running into the way of an issue where maybe it looks like the people talking are also um, facing the same direction. So like say, say we blow this up here, and then we go here and we blow it up here. Um, when it goes back to back, it doesn't look like Aaron and I are talking to each other. It looks like maybe we're talking to somebody together at someone else rather than with one of each other. Um, whereas when you go here and we have the establishing shot, it goes back left and right. Um, super simple, but makes waves of difference. Um, Beverly says, it feels like we should have been focused on the TV with the break in 180. Um, oh, yes, exactly. All of a sudden, it feels like you're then uh, focusing on my brick of a TV. Uh, and it feels like it's shot at different times as well. So you also want to focus on the idea that um, the sight line is there. You can see that in these shots, we also have um, Aaron um, kind of in the foreground, even though he is not the focus. And in this case, um, the focus is on me and my reaction. Uh, but another way to really make your footage feel authentic is um, if we go into here, uh, there are a few different things that we have uh, with L cuts and J cuts. So an L cut is, um, I'm actually gonna create a new composition because I already had messed up, uh, messed with this audio. Um, and 
what a J cut and an L cut is, is is different ways of interaction between using audio that happens before a um, uh, audio that happens before a footage transition and footage that happens before an audio transition. And they both have very good use cases um, and you see them a lot of times. Let's actually hop out of Aaron and me for this scenario. We'll come back to Aaron and me in just a second. But yesterday I went to a birthday party as well. Um, my friend, uh, she's extra, but she's beautiful and wonderful. Um, we have a um, video of her here. Uh, everyone is singing happy birthday to her. We could do once again something here um, where we put the rule of thirds in. Um, I was, since I was shooting it on my phone, I actually um, probably already had those guides up there. But let's look at our templates, make sure that we're um, clicked into our viewfinder guide templates, and we can say rule of thirds. Maybe we want to put Daisy um, up here and we bring it in. It's already a much more interesting shot. Um, I'm moving around. So maybe if I were to be um, actually editing this, I would probably put like a motion warp stabilizer on here if I wanted to, to make it feel a little bit better. Uh, but the reason I wanted to bring this up is a lot of times when you're watching a, um, a video or something and you want to move on to the next thing, uh, it's good to have an L cut or a J cut. And I know I keep saying that, I promise I will explain what it is. But in order to articulate this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm also going to bring in a shot that I took um, of the subway yesterday. And um, I'm going to make sure that I have the right one here. Here it is. Okay, cool. Um, or actually, let's not do that subway. Let's do. I think I did one more subway. Yeah, five one eight nine. Um, so we'll bring this in. We have this, which is noisy. Also, I shot it on an angle and weird to show that we can also go in here, add some rotation. Uh, bring up the scaling maybe you know depends on where we want to focus it uh, maybe we want to have here and have these kind of guidelines come out it depends on what we want to focus on but um, it is kind of fun So, so right now we're left in this moment of happy birthday. Um, and uh, what we can do is maybe we cut the audio here if we wanted to create a J cut. Um, and what we would do is we would bring this up. We'd bring everything over. Um, and uh, you can even have kind of some overlapping if you wanted to. Um, maybe we do this. Uh, I always like to put in like an exponential fade uh onto the audio also if you guys have any questions please um take advantage of the live stream effect of this i am happy to answer any questions you guys have if i also glaze over something um that doesn't make as much sense uh please by all means let me know um okay so here she is she's sharing but do you see how that was a, a much uh, more seamless transition like we kind of have the sound of audio we know that we're gonna move and uh, then it kind of then jumps over and the reason this is called a J cut is because the way that it looks on a um, editing board uh, like this in this case I, we did a little bit of overlap but it's a it's a J you see the um, I can even do a screenshot and we can bring it into Photoshop and I can show you really quick um, oops, do a clear right here. release clipping mask. Uh, actually happy birthday no longer has a copyright. Uh, Sean, Sean said it had copyright for like a hundred years and like literally I think in like two, 2019, they finally gave it up. Isn't that crazy? Um, so you can see here that in this case, it's kind of like a J because we're seeing the audio first and then we're then getting onto the video. Whereas um, 
an L cut is the opposite of that. It's when you see the audio first. I mean, you see the visuals first and then you come to the thing. So in this case, um, we're going to maybe have happy birthday last a little bit longer. Um, and it can, then switch over. Now, uh, if I was doing full on, um, you know, once again, we maybe want to do like an exponential fade here or something. Um, but same experience where now, if we're looking at this, it's called an L cut because when you um, are working with it like this, the the footage is there and then the audio comes. So J cut, L cut, good things to just have. Um, and I wanna show you guys how it is a, the train right after the happy birthday is scaring me, sorry. Um, we're done with the train, I promise. Uh, but the uh, way that you can kind of really continue to mess with this is when you're working with that 180 degree rule, having a uh, seamless, um, conversation between two people gets a lot more interesting when you kind of hop in and have the um the the cuts switch between over the shoulder and what people are saying um so let's go into a we talked about some really weird stuff here so i want to make sure i don't accidentally do some real goofy uh audio here for on on behalf um, but actually, even before we hop into that, one more kind of way that I want to talk about lining up your shots and editing them together is the type of cut. Obviously, these are all quick cuts. There's no fade. There's no transition particularly. But what we have here is a match action shot. So uh, in one shot, I am beginning to sit down and I am matching it with the animation of um, me sitting down. So like here I'm sitting down and then I'm like looking at him. Uh, and then I matched that with this shot where I'm coming over and I'm sitting down and it's a lot less interesting if I fully sit down and then change it like this, like this is way less exciting. Because then it's like, okay, cool. Like, all right, that's just, it, you have to flip it a little bit. But um, instead, if we do an action shot where I, you see both the motion is continuing in the same position, then it makes it a lot more exciting. So um, it's nice to have it. You can also do this with like, if somebody is driving, um, and you want to have the car go off the right hand of the screen. You want it to come off from the left hand. You want to make sure that it, because you, you also don't want to break down. You also don't want it to have any sort of time in between where, um, like, I'm not there. So, like, you don't want to do this and then having it because you want to make sure that the action's already happening. Otherwise, it feels like two separate actions. Um, and, like I said, like with these, um, I know this is not well lit, like, but the, the, the fact that you're doing these edits automatically make it feel more professional than it would be otherwise. Uh, we're also using the rule of thirds here. I'm already kind of cut in to um, this shot, which otherwise, if we were like totally zoomed out, um, what well, I can do, what clear, right? Or I can do, can I do reset? Yeah. If I, if I just reset all these shots, we can see how uninteresting a lot the same vibe is. So I come over, you know, I the match cut still makes it work. But we don't really know what to, where to look because we have Aaron here uh, in the foreground and he is at this intersection where we could um, be subconsciously focusing on him rather than me where in this case we want to have it focus on me so we would scale it up and it's nice to have him still there uh but having that 
intersection on my face or my eyes really helps to make it um, uh, work it. I look like the guy from The Office. Who? I used to get um, Jim, whoever played Jim, but then Jim got hot and people stopped telling me that I looked like him. <laughs> he like bulked up and no one told that to me anymore. And I was like, okay, all right. Um, but uh, so that's just being able to take the work. We can also go in and we can see that maybe like this line is showing us that maybe the, um, the horizontal line is not as uh, straight as we want it to be. So you could maybe mess it with a little bit of rotation and when you scale in, um, it's helped. So it's always helpful to also have a high quality footage and be able to scale it and be able to affect it a little bit more. Um, uh, it just then makes it um, a little bit more grounded. Now, when we were talking about J cuts and L cuts, um, I actually had uh, nested this. Oh, let me see if I can unnest it. Because the reason I nested it is that um, the audio in um, Premiere is really great with um, being able to enhance audio and fix. Uh, so let's see if actually I can do this. Can't I? Can I grab? I f uh, okay. Let's see. What we're doing here is we have the audio uh, between the two of us. And granted, I undid my progress that we had with. Um, I think I also muted. No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, uh, Melanie says, I really appreciate the session because I do these types of shots a lot for work and I've been uh, doing them a bit boring, but after this, I'll definitely switch things up. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Um, glad to hear. Uh, you don't mess around with Jim, says Reverb Mike. That's a great album, by the way. Um, so what we're doing here is we have Aaron talking about Big Bird. Um, we're gonna... Your favorite bird is Big Bird. Wait, your favorite bird is Big Bird from Sesame Street? Yeah, it is. It's Big Bird from Sesame Street. I like Why is Big Bird your favorite bird? I like bird? his feathers. So, um, before we do the cut, we're doing a J cut. Uh, once again, you can, you can draw the line of the J cut of having the audio before the footage. Um, but at this point... Wait, your favorite bird is Big Bird from Sesame Street? Yeah, it is. It's so we're still looking at Aaron um and uh my voice starts which like generically you would think that i you would want to directly switch to me and we do want to switch to me but in order to still make that connection that aaron and i are having a conversation um and i want to see his reaction and there's something happening i'm going to do a j cut so that you hear my audio first before then switching maybe to a the wide shot that we have. So. Your favorite bird is Big Bird. And because we're not watching it, I, we, I said something probably completely else different here. Like, let's see, like, I, if we extend this foot, this audio. Why is Big Bird Big Bird? So yeah, I, I, we didn't even stick to a script. We just kind of talked about Big Bird a bunch of number of times. Um, uh, Wait, your favorite bird is Big Bird from Sesame Street? Yeah, it is. It's Big Bird from Sesame Street. I like Why is Big Bird? And so that this also feels when we when we do the transition directly on the audio, it feels way less natural. Street. I like Why is Big Bird your favorite I like bird? It. The dog bark barking also doesn't help. But um, what I did in here is we can actually, the audio sounds okay. It doesn't sound great. Um, but what I did is I was able to highlight all of these guys um, and all it actually has just a preset that you can go into um, and you mark it as um, well yeah, clear audio type. here we go um, this is what it sounds like without anything it's a mess Hi. Hi. What is your favorite bird? you can't even hear it My favorite bird is Big bird. wait your favorite bird is Big Bird from Sesame Street yeah it is it's Big Bird from Sesame Street so what I did is I highlighted everything and then in the audio tab, you just mark it as a dialogue. Then under here, the preset, I wanna say that I want a low tone voice because we both have lower registers. Um, and uh, basically, Hi. Hi. it'll immediately have 
some nice updates. The one thing though is now suddenly we can hear all this craziness. And so what I did originally actually before is I highlighted all that that we had, I right clicked and I went to nest them all because now we have, um, now we have them all as uh, their own perfected audio. Uh, then we can go in and once again, even though we already named it, we can go back in a dialogue again and add a second preset. Um, which is maybe we want to go over into the presets and go into clean up noisy dialogue. And with that, it gets rid of the noisiness in the back and then comes to then be able to have a lot cleaner of a footage. My favorite bird is big bird. So this works a lot with, we did a little, we showed how L cuts and J cuts can work, but that's not also the only way that you can kind of create a fun way of back and forth between conversations. We also took a, a piece of work, um, and I was able to create a false sense of depth with something called a focus pool. Um, and we have um, uh, me in the foreground, Aaron in the background, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up real quick. Um, 5209, um, all right, and we're gonna say new sequence from clip. Okay, um, he is sitting there. All right, I wanna make sure that there's a light here. All right, cut it down. So pretty boring shot. Oh, your mom texted me. Oh, really, what'd she say? She just wants you to have a good weekend. Oh, well, that's good. Not that interesting, right? Like it's just, hey, your mom called. Oh, what did she say? Um, she wants you to have a good weekend. And uh, we're gonna do the same thing with dialogue real quick. We'll switch it in. We'll say low tone voice. It should do some nice work for us. And then we're gonna go back to editing again. Oh, your mom texted me. Oh, really? What'd she say? She just wants you to have a good weekend. Oh, well, that's good. Now with rule of thirds, we can actually uh, even just ever so slightly increase the uh, focus here. And we have Aaron at the intersection and me at the intersection. Oh, your mom texted me. Really but we can say. do what is called a focus a pool. Weekend. And oh, um, normally you would want to do this actually on the day. Uh, we can do a focus pool. We normally could uh, do this on the day of the um, of the shoot. But let's say that you have footage and you want to make it a little bit more interesting, uh, but you didn't necessarily um, you know, have hands on deck for when you were shooting. So what you can do actually is... We have just one audio. We never need to duplicate the audio. Like we're just gonna keep it as is. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the footage a few times because we're gonna create a, f uh, a fake focus pool. And this is something that you'll see. Um, I'm also gonna get rid of, uh, just stop showing the rule of thirds just so that, uh, cause they're not as important right now. Um, so let's do, sure it's, um, what we're gonna do is I want the very first piece to just be a focus on me uh, because I have the first line. So we're gonna go into effects and I wanna go to Gaussian blur and we're gonna take Gaussian blur uh, and we're gonna apply it to the footage that we have that is visible. And over in our effects panel, we're gonna go and we're going to increase the blurriness. Um, and what I'm gonna try to do here is to completely blur Aaron out of the picture. So we're going to do a free draw Bezier under the uh, Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to very casually kind of um, use the pen tool to, um, and you might have to zoom out a little bit because if it's doing fit, then you might not do it. But if we do this, um, I can create this false sense of depth focus. Um, for me and uh, we can go in and we can actually invert it because uh, I had focused it on me first instead. And then we also have the ability to adjust the feathering uh, with this little drag and drop. Um, and now we have this idea that, Oh, your mom texted me. Oh, really? What'd she say? She just wants you to have a good weekend. Oh, well, that's good. Next, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead um, and I'm going to duplicate it now that the mask is there, um, holding down alt to switch it over. And, um, 
what we'll do is we'll go to effects controls. We'll turn off that inverted. Um, so when we do that, um, it will actually now show Aaron in focus and not me from in, in focus. And what we can do here in this case is after I say my line. Oh, your mom texted me. Oh, really? What she said? And we can cut this down. And what we'll do is we'll go into opacity and we'll create a, a, a keyframe by clicking this little stopwatch, which says um, at this point, we want this to be 0% visible. Um, and then uh, at this next point, we want it to be fully visible. And when we do fully visible, um, it's going to uh, bring in the, uh, the focus pool to be able to then show Aaron. So um, now if we look at it. Oh, really? What you say? So that's not happening okay. fast enough. What we need to do is we actually need to extend this clip a little bit. Um, and then up in our effects, we can actually go in here and switch it. And we can also even kind of go off the waveform. So. Oh, really? What you say? She's. Then from there, we can actually make it. Um, in, uh, we can reverse it. So we'll go and since it's at 100%, before I say my line, we'll bring it back down to zero. Oh, really? What'd she say? She just wants you to have a good weekend. And then what we can do after that, even, is we can actually make it so that there is absolutely no blur. Um, and we will then break the idea of the division because I'm like then looking over my shoulder and we can go from here, change the opacity from um, zero to 100 here. Oh, your mom texted me. Oh, really? What'd she say? She just wants you to have a good weekend. Oh, well, that's good. So um, if we go over here, um, we might want to see that we pull this up a little bit more. It's me. Oh, really? What'd she say? She just wants you to have a good weekend. Oh, well, that's good. Which is cool. So now we have this idea, this kind of fake focus. I'm going to mute it a little bit more so you guys can just more focus on um, the visuals here. Uh, and you don't have to hear me say that over and over and over again. Um, but we can see that I'm in focus. Aaron's in focus. I'm in focus. We're both in focus, um, which adds just another sense of depth to it. But it also still kind of feels like we faked it because we faked it. Um, there's a few things that we can do to make it feel less fakey. Um, one, you can always take the mask path here. Um, and you can see that my, my glasses are getting a little blurred. So, and that's because I'm moving. So let's say maybe we need to go in here. Um, we adjust it so that this is the path that we have. Um, I can create a keyframe for that if I want to. Um, and if I need to adjust it at all. So like maybe, um, since it's a little bit tighter at the beginning, um, I can go into the mask path and at the beginning set a new keyframe that it's a little bit tighter to my face, but then as it progresses in the timeline, it moves, uh, to go along with that. Uh, but something else that we can also do is that when you're doing this real focus, um, on a piece in real life that normally the adjustment of the zoom and the lens is being changed. Um, so it's not just things being blurred and everything staying the same, but there's also this change in kind of how it's zooming in and out, um, so that there is this adjustment. We have everything together here as a blurring in and out. Um, and so what we can do is we can highlight all three once we get it to a place that we're happy and then we can nest it and I can say, um, your mom called nest. Uh, which will put it all into one singular uh, track on our timeline. And what we're going to do here now is we're actually going to, at the time of the blur changes, we'll also go ahead and do a little tiny zoom in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a, with my uh, nested composition selected, I'm going to go over to scale and click scale. And then I'm going to then move a little bit forward. Uh, to when it's focusing on Aaron, I'm going to click scale again. And this time at 100, we'll just do even like a 110. Um, you can also actually go in if you wanted to, which is what we should do. 
Um, and when you click on the motion, you'll see that there is a, a little circle in the center of your composition now. And you can go and I could put it, put it on his face because that's going to be our anchor point for um, where things are scaling in and out of. So maybe we go in and uh, add our second point when we add our scaling keyframe and we change this to 110. Um, and then if we scale across our timeline, it kind of zooms in a little bit. Um, and then when we skipped back to us, we're going to want to reverse it again. So we're going to add a keyframe. It's zoomed in on Aaron. And then uh, we'll go back to here. We'll change it to 100 um, as it zooms back to me. Um, and we're noticing that maybe it needs to move a little bit faster because by the time it gets to me, it's like that. Same with when we zoom in. Uh, actually, when we zoom in, it's actually pretty good on him. And then finally, maybe uh, when we do one last, we do like 105 because maybe it's like the switch between the two. So we can select everything, right click it and do ease in, which will make it feel a little bit more natural too. Um, and switch. Oh, let's do this. See, but now we don't have the lineup of this blur when I look over my shoulder to properly do it. So let's do that one more time. And now I'm going to unmute it one more time so you guys can hear it one last time and we can see what it looks like. So let's blow it up real quick. Oh, your mom texted me. Oh, really? What'd she say? She just wants you to have a good weekend. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, and so they just add it. Obviously, you can fine tune it more. You can do a little bit more love to it. Uh, but the the idea is still there, and the, the idea of pulling it in and out makes it feel a little bit more um, authentic and adds a little bit more of uh, some excitement. I think I might have. Is this the one that I did? This is the one that I actually did um, last night. Same footage, same technique. Uh, but let's actually look at it when I because it wasn't as bright. Uh, <laughs> as it is in my room right now. Um, so let's check it out when it looks like this. Oh, your mom texted me. Oh, really? What'd she say? She just wants you to have a good weekend. Oh, well, that's good. Because I also went in and I also zoomed in into that moment um, on the face to kind of begin with uh, as it was uh, for uh, just bringing in and out. Now, also, uh, as we were kind of going before, uh, I'm going to mute it so you guys don't have to listen to it. But the idea of having a different aspect ratio, when we were talking about it a little earlier, um, can really change the feeling of uh, a mood. So we could do something where it starts off as a, uh, this is all in 16 by 9. Um, what you could do is you could even take in just like a regular square box. Um, and you can go ahead and draw actually black boxes onto the screen because when you're using distribution or maybe you're uploading something uh, you want to have it all set into one aspect ratio actually in your sequence settings because then if you kind of switch out of it then um, it's going to be weird when you're doing assembly uh, unless you have that already planned into putting in your final project or whatever so it's nice to be able to adjust the aspect ratio with literal black bars um, on top of the composition that you have in the moment so um we have these uh i'm just going you, you could do definitely some um real math and you could actually figure out the sizes that you want to have but um uh <laughs> jack says i wish my mom texted me have a good weekend it's normally why haven't you called me i get, I get that i get that um i want to go up here and create a um another shape layer all within the same one um and maybe this feels a little bit more jack related so we can actually go in and uh adjust the path position um here and so if we go and we have both positions of the bars keyframed we can maybe um go in here and add a keyframe to both of them, then we go and we take them off the frame, 
take them off the frame. And we'll do the same thing where we highlight both of these guys, right click and say, ease in. Um, but it feels dramatically different now. Let's see if we're back, if we're back. Come on. Power through for me. Power through for me, YouTube. I have excellent connection, it says. So we're back. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, that was such a great dramatic moment for, for that moment. Um, so uh, here we go. We're back. Cool. And uh, so what we can do in this scenario oh, your mom texted me. is we can have a scenario oh, where the black bars are zooming in. Oh, your mom texted me. Just wants you to have a good weekend. And then they can zoom out to kind of show that there's no big deal. That it's just the mom calling. But it immediately feels very weird. We can also do something similarly with maybe the different sides of the um, graphic to be on the left and right to make it a shorter side to maybe feel a little bit older. Um, we can go in and uh, maybe switch it closer to a four by three where it will feel like an older time. Maybe your mom's a little bit older um, and uh, you can do the same kind of experience and it will change the feeling once again, if we go in and um, an easy way to even do this is if you place both of them proper, like, you know, as however you want to, you could even actually just add a keyframe to the whole scaling of the, um, of the sides here. So you could make it a big scale and it will actually bring it in and out, um, as it goes. Oh, your mom takes Um, and in this case I made it too dramatic. So it's a little bit too crazy, but you can, Oh, your mom takes me. Same sort of thing. Copy, paste, switch it up like this. Oh, yeah. oh your mom texted me. Oh, really? What'd she say? She just wants you to have a good weekend. Oh, what? But it automatically changes the ideas of kind of how you're interacting with the, the piece. So uh, we have about like two minutes left. Uh, so just to quickly go through everything that we went through, we went through L cuts and J cuts. Um, which you can look up uh, anywhere online and they'll also give you a rundown of it. We went through the 180 degree rule. Uh, we went through the rule of thirds. We went through um, the importance of using horizon lines and uh, focus points. We uh, also went over the idea of being able to use L cuts and J cuts in conversation, but also using L cuts and J cuts in transitions. Um, and then also all the different aspect ratios. There are hundreds of aspect ratios, probably like five to 10 that are very commonly used. Give it a good search and try to see um, what's going on. But something that is really fun and helpful for me is if you actually watch any form of entertainment, whether it's, um, you know, high class or, you know, just some fun TV is really paying attention to when you're watching it, how many times they cut, when they cut, when the audio changes from different points from the cut. And then also when, um, there's any time an aspect ratio change. Try to focus with the bars on the screen. Uh, try to focus when things are switching and how it makes you feel. And then try to add that to your piece. Because even if your quality of your video is not incredible, it will make it feel a lot more incredible just by having that intention. Um, thank you to everyone that was here in the chat. Uh, next up is pro tips. Thank you for Annika for being a wonderful mod. And uh, we'll see you soon.